One of the most challenging things about working with Bubble is when you get data back in a format that is just not very useful to how you want to use it. Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you about this thing called the Regex expression, which stands for regular expression, where it allows you to work with data and process it in a way so you can pull out the parts of it that are useful to you and discard the rest. So the thing to identify straight out of the gate is what is the text that I have and what format is that in? And then what is the text, the final result, and what format is that? So a lot of times reject stuff will be used. I know I've personally used it for the end of a file name, whether it's an MLV, MP4, a number of things, checking that and then being able to do a find and replace on it. Now, there's also a ton of other use cases where you have emails buried perhaps in a bunch of text and you want to extract just an email or URLs or you know addresses, phone numbers, a number of things. But once you basically identify that, here's the steps that we can follow and what we're going to follow here in the video. So we've identified it, let's just say in this case, so I've actually already drawn up a little bit of example text. We're going to extract these email addresses from this text and then in this one we're going to extract the URLs. And then we're going to use a tool like Claude or ChatGDP. One of the great things about these tools is that writing a rejects expression from scratch is not, it's like doing long division. No one really does it. So let's ask this uh, tool to please provide a rejects expression extracting email addresses from a string of text. And notice I'm using the free version here, so this should be something that you can easily, you know, go and grab for anyone that doesn't have anything more than this. Now we're gonna uh, note this, and actually, so let's let's head back to this. We've we basically created that rejects expression. Now we're gonna test test it. First, we're gonna test it over at a site called rejects101.com, where we can insert that regular expression, remove the spaces, and then I'm gonna take the string that I already have here and double check that, that that works. Cool, so this rejects expression finds these two things. Um, now, I'm gonna do the same thing for this, for extracting URLs. And so just having a comeback with that, where we'll do the same exact thing, we'll copy this, paste it over here, and for anyone you know who hasn't actually set one of these up in Bubble, this is, uh, what, where the magic happens, I suppose, and where you get to see this. Okay, so we actually have four of these. Amazing. So we're going to head over to a, a UI here that's pre-set up where there are no workflows. And we'll, let's take a look at our UI. There's, I will note that we've got a little bit of a leg up here where we get result back one, result back two. These are just single text fields. And why don't we go ahead and add some for list as well, and we'll just show that off. Okay, so I've created result back list text one, and then we'll do that again for text, or list two of text. And so we'll play around with this, and you'll get to see uh, all of this kind of uh, done. So next up, let's go and wire this up for a workflow. So just imagine basically somewhere you are going to have um, data, and you're gonna transform that data using the rejects expression. So that data in our case is sitting inside of this multi-line input values because we're gonna insert it there. Yours is probably, you know, coming from someplace else. I'll just mention, you know, something like this. So I have these nice, you know, pre-formatted email something, but you also might be getting back some kind of gobbledygook like this and wanting to know what you would do with that. So we're gonna take this value and then we are going to search for this extract with rejects and let's go and grab here. First, we're gonna start with the emails. And this is the magic. So you just plop it in where it says reject pattern and then it's gonna do that. Now, it's going to evaluate to a list of text because of uh, if it finds multiple of those and it might, I, I yeah. Um, because it's potential that there could be multiple. So it's gonna question, are we gonna take the first item, second item? So we'll, let's play around with this. We're gonna start just like this and let's go ahead and get uh, something in here, shall we? 
So we'll drop this string in there and we note that it's Jane Smith and support here. And we're just gonna run this, we'll watch it do its thing. It finds it Jane Smith because we have it set as the first one. We see that come back here. Now, if we play around with this and it's obviously whether the last item or the second item, it's gonna be the same. So we'll just see that in action again. Proving out, we won't watch those steps, but just proving out basically what's here. But then let's go and rather than uh, do this result back one, let's do this result back one list and we'll leave both of those in there. So maybe you want a list of things and you could see how we could set another state too where we could say this one would be a number. We'll just say uh, list one count. So we get to see all, there's there's a lot of different things, right? There's information that we wanna know about the information. And in this case, let's go here and then let's ask it for its count. And then let's, at the end of this one, we'll just put the number here. For this list count. So we'll grab that and drop it in here. And let's see, did we set up that right? It's actually in the UI. That is set up correctly. It's this one here. It's not the result back. It's the result back's list. Cool. So, boom. So we can see that it found this one and it found this one. Now, let's jump on to our final example here with the URLs where we get to see this kind of multiple ways and it just proves out what's really going on here. So we're gonna enter this in here and we'll go now and use the same state setter. We'll grab the list from this multi-line input value and we'll go with extract with rejects and in this case, but stick around because we're also gonna look at one final thing where here we're just saying find any URL, but maybe there's a particular case where you actually wanna find one specific, like URLs from a specific domain. So we're, we're bringing this list two back. Let's make sure that our UI reflects that. So it's not the result two, but it's this list two. And we'll run that. So we can see one, two, three, four of these were found. Cool. And since there was nothing in multi-input line here, nothing came back there. But let's pretend that we want to find only something from example.org. So the, the key here is just being very specific about, you know, what it is that you got going on, just using natural language for it to understand you. And then you can take its stuff and work with it. So we'll just drop that in to extract with rejects here, where we'll do like that. We'll go again with this, only with the second one, and we'll wrap it up here and show off that. And actually, this is pretty great that it didn't work out the first time because you might have the same problem when you're working with this. One of the things it's doing is it's looking for the www, well, with or without, but we also want to make it sure that it can handle subdomains. So we'll just give it that and see what it says. So there, here we had this www, here we don't. So obviously, again, the... The AI in this case is just a tool that allows you to accomplish what you want. It still doesn't know enough to know what you want. And that's why, you know, humans will always be useful in scenarios like this because we're the ones determining at some level what it is that we want out of the thing that we are building as the uh, creator. So let's run this again. And then we can see here that it got this one now. So just a little bit of a tweak there, which is great because, you know, that type of thing is going to come up, especially if you are trying to get at stuff super, super specific. 
If you like this video, then you'll also really like the one about Scraping Bee, which is about scraping a URL from another website, because that is great data. If you're gonna pull something in and you're gonna extract some stuff from it, there's a lot of amazing things that you could be building with combining tools and techniques like this. And if you would also like to just go straight to your use case, if you already know your uh, what you're gonna do, if you have a URL or an email address, phone number, date, or something like that, IP address, then feel free to grab one of these pre-made ones that's just hanging out in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, it means so much if you give it a like, subscribe for more great tips about Bubble, and thanks so much for watching.